Okay, so um, somebody sent me this image here. You see in the background. It's a pile driving machine is what this amounts to. And I think they're implying NIST is doing some pile driving tests. I believe those are the weights to the left. And then they go in that little column there. And they drop it down on a, on a plate. The plate transfers the load to the column. And then they measure it and use algorithms and all that other stuff. Uh, it's kind of a stupid test. As we look in the middle there, you see the reinforcements been bent over by the, uh, let's see that one there. Yeah, um, that might have been bent over by the uh, debris, debris field and also the construction. The way they deconstructed, rather, with the uh, excavators and everything. They just went at this like a wildcat. Just like a wildcat you're trying to pick up. They, did, they didn't do this in mind that there would be pile drive testing. They didn't conserve the uh, um, the uh, piles. They just pulled at them, yanked at them. I showed a video where they were doing all that. Um, where they were doing all that yanking and everything else. And so I told him, I said, that's just a waste of time. And his reply back was that it's just they got money. I tried to find that image under uh, a search, uh, pile drive testing in Google, I mean, uh, at Surfside. And I can't find it, so I'm not sure where, where he got the image from. But the, uh, so, so these are fractured at the bottom. So they'd have to put a plate. They'd have to cut it even. Dig around, possibly dig bore around the concrete there to, to release it from the. Uh, so you bore around in this case for that pile driving test since some of the rebar flooring is tied into it. So they had to bore around the uh, the, the the pad um, so they can have access to driving the, the the loads, the weight onto the piers. To do that, they would have to support themselves on the pad that they just removed. So that pad's going to be elastic because they don't have enough beams to go from one column to another column. Their system is flawed. Their, t their testing system um, is, is flawed. They're using a, like a tripod system. I'm trying to find it. A tripod system right there. Unless these tripods, the base of these feet, make it from one, one pier to another pier, then they're actually supporting themselves on the floor that we know is a reinforced floor of concrete. I mean, a reinforced floor of uh, steel. But to drive the pier, the columns, which they've already destroyed, they're going to have to make sure that, that it's not fractured. Oh, damn it! Where's the recording? Yeah, where's the recording? Right there. Okay, so it's a flawed system to begin with. To do that, you're not going to be able to do that. Look up that pile driving system. But more so, note that how that pads have to be supported. They've got it on a springy reinforced pad, which doesn't even make sense for getting the proper data. But this would, to me, would point towards that they want to um, um, try to say it's got something to do with, uh, or you know, that they still want to explore subsidence, you know, the settling of the property, that they still want to explore that. And they picked on the column that's not even uh, that, that's kind of stable out there that didn't even have that much load on it. So in theory, it should, depending on what how much water is around it, and did they test to try to see how hollow it is around there already? Did they already probe it? Did it uh, you know, would it take the is that the three? That's the three, the three of them together. Just the three uh, pressure induced footers. So. Um, or is that a column, or those column footers? Because I think they can use them both there. They, they allowed an option, if I remember right. So I don't know, you know, what, what's the, the purpose of that is it's kind of nefarious. It's, uh, it, and the testing is, is flawed, again. Putting it on top of a, a springy, if you will, a springy concrete uh, a pad like that. And then you're going to load it with all that weight. With all that weight. And then when it comes down and, and impacts, when they release it, it impacts, you're going to... To have a uh, um, right where they put the the, the uh, supports, you're going to have some deformation right where the supports are. It's going to want to start driving and interfering with that with that area there. So the next you drive it a few times to get the readings, 
and each reading is going to be a little different depending on how much more the, the pad fracture around it where the base is supported. It should, if you're going to do this, should be full steel across, uh, a lot more steel across each one of these piers to transfer it and, and welding, the, welding this frame together level on top of it and then driving it so you now have a stable platform to work from that's uh, going to be consistent measurements. These measurements will not be consistent just because they're going to be have to cut open the pad to do this because again the pad is connected to the pier caps. Um, one way or another they're connected to the pier caps. They sit on top of it or whatever it may be but they need to get to it and it's got some connection there and they want to drive it down. You got to free the pier up. And let the free be te the, the pier be tested individually by itself, not with any skin friction, surface tension, or anything else. No disrespect to the to the the connections, the concrete paste. Don't disrespect that. You're going to get different readings. You're going. It's just not right. It's not right. I, I don't know why they why they consider that a fair test. Now I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of this the screen. Okay, that was brilliant. All right, so screen recorder, um, screen recorder, screen recorder, screen recorder. Hmm. Hmm. Screen recorder is right in front of me. There we go. Take care, guys.